We're continuing now with session one, the Science Board Symposium, which is titled, How Does 30 Years of Research on Changing North Pacific Ecosystems Inform the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development Goals? And our first presentation is by Dr. Stephen Bograd, on Pisces engagement with the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. Thank you, Steve. Oh, and just, just quickly, if you have questions, would you please put them in the chat and we will read your question to Steve to answer. Thank you very much. Okay, um, well, thank you, Vera. Um, I assume you can see my, my slides okay? Yes. Okay, so um, yeah, today I'm going to talk a little bit about Pisces engagement with the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development, as you mentioned uh, earlier. Um, but first, I'll give a, a short update on the Future Science Program and how it relates to the Ocean Decade, give a little bit of a review of the goals of the UN Decade of Ocean Science. Uh, and then talk a little bit about its implementation, so the structure and timeline of the Ocean Decade. Uh, and then finish up talking about some current ideas and potential um, activities for Pisces engagement in the UN Ocean Decade. So um, you saw from Dr. Park earlier this um, diagram of Pisces structure. And what I'm going to do today is, is focus a little more on the overarching scientific program, Future. So that's forecasting and understanding trends, uncertainty, and responses of North Pacific marine ecosystems. So I'm the co-chair um, with Sukyung Kang from Korea of the Future Scientific Steering Committee. And as the flagship science program in Pisces, we anticipate that we're going to be able to lead the way, hopefully, in coordinating and aligning some of Pisces activities with the UN Ocean Decade. So just to quickly review, um, the Future Science Program, again, it has two main um, fundamental objectives to increase understanding of climatic and anthropogenic impacts and consequences on marine ecosystem with continued leadership at the frontiers of marine science. And then to develop activities that include the interpretation, clarity of presentation, peer review, dissemination, and evaluation of ecosystem products. So things like status reports and forecasts. So it's both to increase our understanding um, through the science, but also to provide products that are useful to society. There are three uh, fundamental science themes um, that are outlined in the future science plan. What determines an ecosystem's intrinsic resilience and vulnerability to natural and anthropogenic forcing? How do ecosystems respond to natural and anthropogenic forcing and how might they change in the future? And then how do human activities affect coastal ecosystems and how are societies affected by changes in those ecosystems? So this is really kind of a unique approach within um, the history of Pisces in that we were really trying to be holistic within the future program. That is to bridge the natural and social sciences and to look at everything from climate variability, climate drivers of the ecosystem and to understand that and to understand it well enough that we could even begin to skillfully predict and project what those ecosystem changes are going to be, and then bringing in the human dimensions to understand how they are affected by these changes as well. Um, so Vera mentioned earlier that um, in, in the recent phase of, of future, the earliest phase of future, we were really just trying to get our bearings and, and understand what, what appropriate structure we needed to, to um, you know, take on this very challenging um, pro program. But within phase two, one of the key things that we did was um, develop and implement this social, ecological, environmental systems framework or SEAS, SEAS approach to address climate change impacts in the North Pacific. Um, and we put this paper out that describes several crisis case studies in the North Pacific using that SEAS approach to, to demonstrate how it can be used. And I'm sure all of you or most of you are, are very familiar with this diagram already. So this is the graphical illustration of how we see the future program and how we see the SEAS framework within Pisces. Okay, so we're looking at, at all the dimensions and how they're linked from climate variability and change that's driving changes in processes in the ocean, which have 
cumulative effect, effects and impacts on various components of the ecosystem, which then affect the human system. And of course, the human system is also impacting the, the ocean as well. So within Pisces, what we can do is we can sort of map out what activities are going on within the organization and how that fits into this C's framework and, and this schematic. Um, and there's two um, reasons for doing this. Uh, and you can see the, the various expert groups that are located within this uh, C's framework. First, we wanna facilitate these transdisciplinary interactions within Pisces, make sure that different working groups, different um, expert groups are talking to the right people and exchanging information. But it also allows us to um, determine what are some of the thematic gaps that we might be missing in Pisces that we, we may want to um, turn our attention to with new working groups or, or whatever. Um, and you see in the middle there that, that monitoring and assessment is of course a key component to, to all of this, to this framework. Um, so I mentioned earlier that, that we can use this C's approach to um, try to understand specific issues that have arisen in the North Pacific. Um, and in this, uh, this example, we're looking at how climate change, climate variability has impacted oceanic processes in a way that, that changed the ecosystem in the Western Pacific to allow for um, a number of large scale jellyfish blooms uh, in the Western Pacific which had quite a few societal uh, impacts uh, in, in the region. So this was a way that we could use this C's approach to try to make the linkages all the way from climate change to the human dimensions. So that was um, kind of you know, the, the highlight of what we were trying to do within phase two is to really bring in the human dimensions and, and do this transdisciplinary work. Um, and as Vera mentioned, we're, we're aiming to move into a phase three. And within phase three, what we're focusing on, um, first of all, is now that we've kind of implemented this C's approach, we want to um, and further investigate it and improve upon it um, and, and implement it further within the organization and really get at some of these transdisciplinary solution oriented projects. Uh, within the organization. Um, but two new things that, that we're aiming to um, focus on within phase three is this engagement with the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. Okay, so the Ocean Decade is just beginning. Um, we hope to um, begin phase three now with future, so the timing is really good. Um, and then we, we recognize that we need enhanced communication um, both with other scientists, with various stakeholders, and also early career ocean professional involvement and development within the program. Something that we've always tried to do, and we, we really seek to do that. And, and you'll hear more about that in the, in the following presentation. So today, um, I'll talk a little bit about some of the initial ideas um, for engagement with the um, ocean decade. So first, I'll give you just a quick overview um, of the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science. Some of you may be quite familiar with it already. Um, you may be familiar with this, um, this tagline from the Ocean Decade. So the decade is meant to provide the science we need for the ocean we want. Okay, so this is being run out of the UN, the IOC, Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission. And so we could ask, how does the IOC in the ocean decade envision going from the ocean we have right now uh, within 10 years um, to the ocean we want? And so the decade has three overriding objectives, um, very broad scale objectives to identify the required knowledge for sustainable development, to generate comprehensive knowledge and understanding of the ocean and then to increase the use of ocean knowledge. So it's to identify what we need to know, figure it out, create the knowledge, and then actually apply it and, and use it. Those are the, the basic core objectives of the decade. How do we go about doing that? Well, within the decade, there'll be many um, different kinds of activities, what they call decade actions. Um, and these take various forms and different levels. For example, contributions, in this case, they're referring to um, funding and monetary contributions, which is not something that Pisces will contribute, but 
we are hoping that perhaps um, other uh, funding sources and private foundations and the like can provide some support. But then there's different levels of, of actual activities as well, from, from one-off activities like um, getting together a workshop or doing a particular uh, paper review or something, um, to doing these larger projects um, that are focused on certain aspects of the decade, to these very large-scale, long-lasting, um, multinational programs. Um, and, and that's somewhere that, that we, we may consider crises playing so these decade actions provide the science we need to deal with the um, identified decade challenges and get to the ocean we want. And the, dec the ocean decade has defined the ocean we want as um, a clean ocean, a healthy and resilient ocean, a productive ocean, a predicted ocean, a safe ocean, um, a uh, an inspiring and engaging ocean and an accessible ocean. So those are the, the decade outcomes that, that we're aiming for within the decade. All right. So I mentioned that there's decade challenges. And so within the implementation plan of um, the ocean decade, and, and by the way, the implementation plan was developed over the course of the past year, um, they did seek input from uh, marine science organizations and various stakeholders globally. Pisces did provide some input to that. And what they've identified is a number of these really key challenges that they see as being um, at the forefront um, over the course of the next decade. Uh, and this includes, you know, addressing sources of pollutants and contaminants, protecting, monitoring, managing, and restoring ecosystems under multiple stressors, Optimizing the role of the ocean to sustainably feed the world's population, contributing to equitable and sustainable development, um, understanding the ocean climate nexus, so building resilience and improving predictions and forecasts, um, but then also expanding multi-hazard warning systems uh, and communications, ensuring a sustainable ocean observing system that delivers timely information um, globally developing a comprehensive digital representation of the ocean. And then from the social perspective, ensuring that there's um, comprehensive capacity development um, and equitable access to data, information, knowledge, and technology. Also identifying and overcoming barriers to behavioral change um, that's required for a step change in humanity's relationship with the ocean. So big challenges, obviously, and you know, within an organization like Pisces, um, we've identified many of these, these same challenges as well. So again, um, looking back at the decade implementation plan, there's these decade actions of, of various levels that might be one-off um, actions or um, multi-year, uh, multinational global scale um, programs. Um, so these are the, the tangible and tangible initiatives and work that will be implemented um, based on uh, input from a wide range of stakeholders. The idea is to um, um, approach and, and make progress towards these decade objectives and also to handle these immediate and pressing needs, these challenges that the Ocean Decade has identified. And they do note that these challenges may evolve um, throughout the decade. And, and within the next 10 years, we may see new challenges that, that arise. And we end up with the ocean we want and these decade outcomes. Um, and ultimately what we're um, aiming to do is to contribute to the UN's 2030 agenda and regional and global policy frameworks. Okay, so this is a really large scale, global scale program that, that we're trying to build here. Also within the implementation plan, the Ocean Decade makes us a strong point that the science needs to be transformative in nature. So it's not just doing business as usual, it's doing transformative science for the benefit of society. Um, and so there's a number of, of uh, items here listed within the implementation plan 
that relate to what they mean by transformative ocean science. And I just highlight a few of them here, um, multi-stakeholder um, environment um, involving both generators and users of knowledge, um, being solution focused, um, being big, audacious, forward-looking, um, integrating natural and social science disciplines, which um, as I've mentioned, Pisces has been aiming to do for a while now. Um, trying to, to get um, information from local and indigenous no knowledge holders, okay? Um, and also um, doing work that's important, not just for the developed countries, but for less developed countries and developing countries as well. And it strives for generational gender and geographic diversity. Um, and the science needs to be communicated across a wide range of stakeholders and shared openly. So, um, big ambitious plans for the, for the ocean decade. So what about the North Pacific? Um, so over the last couple of years, the IOC and Ocean Decade has um, uh, held these uh, regional planning workshops for the Ocean Decade. Um, and we had a North Pacific regional planning workshop in Tokyo in the summer of uh, last year. Um, this was uh, co-sponsored by both IOC, Westpac and Pisces. So Pisces, Pisces played a key role in this. Um, and it was very interesting and um, informative meeting. Um, it was perhaps maybe a little too, um, too high on the number of generators of science as opposed to users of science at the meeting. But nonetheless, it tried to bring in a wide range of scientists and stakeholders to determine how can the North Pacific um, contribute to the ocean decade. And really what we find is that there's a lot of unique aspects to the North Pacific um, that really make it very important um, for the decade to look into. Of course, it's high population density and population growth, um, the rapidly growing economy, um, over uh, high fisheries and aquaculture production, increasing demands on seafood, um, potentially over exploitation of fisheries in some regions, um, very different fisheries management systems in different regions uh, within the Pisces domain, and very high biodiversity, and in some regions at least, understudied ecosystem structure and dynamics. And of course, we have climate change and these changing ecosystems. So there's a lot of aspects to the North Pacific that make it really important um, for the ocean decade. And in fact, the objectives and goals of the ocean decade really can't be realized without a lot of progress being made uh, within the North Pacific. And Pisces as the leading intergovernmental organization within the North Pacific will hopefully play a, a big role in that. So the Ocean Decade does have an executive planning group. Um, so these are um, experts from around the world who pr provide um, advice to various IOC bodies tasked with making the decade happen. Um, and I'll just point out a couple of uh, folks here, uh, Thang Li Chow and Aaron Satterthwaite. Um, both um, members of Pisces and, and longstanding members of, of our organization who are also part of the expert planning group. Um, so we're really happy to have Pisces representation in the leadership of the Ocean Decade. So quick overview of some of the, the next steps and, and milestones for the Ocean Decade. Um, so I mentioned the implementation plan, which is has more or less been completed and is going to be um, approved and, and finalized, I believe, this fall um, at the UN General Assembly. So the UN Ocean Decade has um, launched its first call for action for decade programs and contribution. That just happened about a week and a half ago. And this call is gonna be open for about three months. And what they're looking for here are these very large scale, ideas for these very large scale programs um, again, the multinational, multi-year, multidisciplinary types of programs. So those are due in January. Um, the decade officially begins um, January 1st. And then in the first part of the year, there's gonna be a progressive rollout of stakeholder engagement mechanisms. Uh, I'm not sure quite how that's gonna play out, but it'll be interesting to see. And um, the first decisions on, um, on the group of endorsed decade programs um, will happen around March or April. And finally, the first Ocean Decade Conference is planned for end of May, early June in Berlin. 
So a couple of things to, to keep in mind here. One is that this is the first call for action. Um, there will be many more calls for action um, over the course of the decade. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind is that this is not a funding call. So there, there's no actual funding associated with um, any of these proposals that you might put forward. The idea is that the ideas go forward, um, international global collaborations are developed, and having the um, endorsement of the Ocean Decade and the IOC will, at least in theory, um, provide the leverage to um, secure funding from other sources. And that could be from national governments and funding agencies, um, NGOs, or um, private foundations. So that's the idea behind it. So um, I encourage you to look at this, oceandecade.org, um, where you could um, you know, submit these actions. But the other thing I wanted to point out is that the Ocean Decade is also allowing people to, to log in here and actually just register an idea. It could just be a few sentences, a paragraph of a decade action. And it may be something that, that's not very well formulated at this point, but the hope is that the Ocean Decade can facilitate getting folks in touch with other people in other parts of the globe, um, both scientists and stakeholders, um, to help uh, move that, that proposed action into fruition. So the last part of the presentation here, I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, you know, an, at least some initial thoughts on how Pisces can contribute to the UN, o, UN Ocean Decade. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the partnership between um, ICES and Pisces in this regard. Um, and again, what I'll note here in terms of the Ocean Decade is that the advisory bodies within IOC are not defining what the decade is, right? The, what the decade is is going to be defined by us, the community, the global marine science community, and our stakeholder partners. Um, and so ICES and Pisces being the, the leading marine science intergovernmental organizations really in the Northern Hemisphere, um, we really do see that, that we should and, and can play a strategic role in providing some leadership um, to the decade. So I'll talk a little bit about some initial thoughts on that, um, talk about some at least uh, initial ideas for some, some decade aligned Pisces expert groups. Um, and ultimately what I'd like to do is just encourage all of you, the Pisces community to, um, to start thinking about potential decade activities that Pisces can, um, can participate in. Okay, so ICES Pisces coordinated activities. So this began um, at the annual meeting in Victoria last year where some initial meetings um, were held to just say, okay, the decade's coming up. What do our organizations need to do um, to prepare for that? And, and to maybe you know, provide some, some uh, again, some leadership role and strategy moving forward. Um, there've been multiple calls um, over the first half of this year about that. Um, an initial draft strategic plan um, for potential joint activities was prepared, although that's, that's very much still a work in progress. An initial um, short um, statement or letter on um, at least a, um, a plan to do some joint activities around the ocean decade was sent to the leadership, the Governing Council of Pisces and the IC Scientific Committee. Um, ICES and Pisces did collectively provide some joint comments on the de decade implementation plan. And then finally, we've tried uh, in the last couple of months to, to formalize some of this discussion and strategizing um, around a, a study group. Um, so we've put together a, uh, a proposal for a study group on the, on the ocean decade and mentioned again that um, it's not in existence yet. Um, it will be under review at governing council. Um, probably next week, but the aim is to, um, again, leverage the um, tremendous amount of, of history and expertise and broad uh, network of partners that collectively ICES and Pisces have, as well as to leverage our joint activities that we've long been doing around issues like climate variability and change, fisheries and ecosystem-based management, social, ecological, environmental dynamics, human dimension. Um, and hopefully, um, even though we, we've started this, I think there's, there's um, lots of potential for improvement in international 
capacity building and early career science development. And we think these, you know, these joint activities that we have a history of pursuing are very well aligned with a lot of the UN um, decade goals and societal objectives. Um, so the plan is to have a couple of um, ICES focused um, chairs of this study group and a couple of Pisces um, chairs. I've got some names here of, of people who have been proposed, but again, we'll find out within the next couple of weeks uh, about the status of this proposal and, and hopefully we'll, we'll get it up and running very soon. Okay, so back to the ocean, we, back to the, the original question of the decade, what is the ocean we want? And um, the Future Scientific Steering Committee at our meeting last spring, um, Makino san suggested this, it was a really good exercise. What we did is we, we went home between uh, consecutive days of, of meetings with the assignment of all of us providing a vision of what is the ocean we want in 2030 at the end of the decade. If we know where we wanna go, we can at least start thinking about um, how we wanna get there. And lots of great themes and ideas um, came out of that, but there, were, um, there was a convergence of several key themes. And I, and I think they represent um, you know, some of the expertise and history of what Pisces um, has been interested in, uh, including climate and ecosystem predictability, um, again, seas, resilience and sustainability of ecosystems, food secured, security and human health, hazards and extreme events, um, and of course, improving communication and equity and diversity. So again, you know, these things that we want to see within the Future Scientific Steering Committee and within Pisces are very well aligned with what the um, Ocean Decade goals are. So um, with respect to, to that kind of thinking, uh, one thing that, that we did last fall at the annual meeting in Victoria is we had a, um, a coordination meeting between the Future Steering Committee and three of the working groups that um, we co-parent. So 36, which is on ecosystem thresholds and resilience and, and reference points, 40, which is climate and ecosystem predictability, and 41, which is marine ecosystem services, we got together and said, how do we work together? So we're not each individually doing our own um, you know, focusing on our own, our own terms of reference and our own products, but how do we um, work uh, collaboratively across these dimensions? And it was a really good discussion. And the theme that really came out of that was to focus on drivers and impacts of extreme events around the North Pacific, potentially with a focus on direct and indirect drivers of harmful algal blooms. And so part of, uh, one of the things that came out of this discussion in part was this future sponsored workshop that we were supposed to have this year on climate extremes and coastal seas. Um, that's been um, postponed, we hope, to Jindao in 2021. And we started thinking about, you know, potential for an expert group, perhaps a working group proposal on looking at the drivers, attribution, predictability, ecosystem and societal impacts of climate extremes. So for example, marine heat waves and halves is is one of the ones that, that came up in our discussions. So I'll finish off by just um, focusing here on, on just, you know, maybe uh, advancement of this idea that, um, that has occurred over the last few weeks as various expert groups and committees have met. And we've talked about, um, you know, how do we develop these transdisciplinary ideas to advance future and Pisces, but also align with the decade. Um, and so this is just a conceptual idea um, at this point, but I think it's, a, it's one that, um, you know, gives you a sense of the kind of multidisciplinary um, solution-based activities that we think will be important for advancing future um, and also in aligning with the decade. Okay, so the motivation um, for this is climate extremes in the North Pacific are are rising, um, and there are large uncertainties of their impact on, on various aspects of the social, ecological, environmental dimensions. Coastal systems and communities are especially vulnerable to these extremes, yet we really don't understand um, that vulnerability very well. 
Um, we now have this CS framework that we're trying to implement within Pisces to, to better facilitate these transdisciplinary um, programs. Um, but there's a need to really further develop that approach and, and develop even some quantitative methods that will allow us to, to get a better understanding and, and ultimately prediction of events and um, ideas for, for solutions. So the idea that came out of some of this discussions, and again, this is, this is not a, a formulated proposal at this point, um, but it's an idea that we're, that we're working towards, um, is, to have, is to look at these social, ecological, environmental impacts of climate extremes in Pacific coastal systems, and potentially develop these, these three um, complementary but separate working groups. So one on the physical side on predictability and uncertainty of climate extremes, in a changing climate. So the idea there is to expand upon what working group 40 has done. Another more biological focused working group on um, impacts of climate extremes and, and coastal ecosystem functioning. So that would be a follow on to some of the advances that working group 36 has made. And then a joint working group on resilient marine ecosystems services under climate extreme. So that is an advance of what working group 41 has been doing. And so the idea is to develop some of these ideas and really bring in some of our key international partners um, to participate in some of these activities. And that could be CLIVAR, um, Asia Pacific Network, IMBER, um, there's Westpac, there's many others that I'm sure all of you are aware of. You know, and sticking again with this theme of, of um, promoting the development of early career professionals, one idea is to bring in um, some of these early career professionals as C's fellows who would then work to synthesize and coordinate the activities um, across these working groups. So the idea here is to do, uh, is to develop early career professionals um, to do transdisciplinary research, to do this with international partners, and hopefully to do solution-based transformative science. So whether or not this is an idea that could be put forward as a potential Pisces-led decade program, that's something we, we can think about as a community. Um, but I just wanna end here um, by just posing questions to, to all of you, um, things that I, I would like the Pisces community to, to be thinking about, um, not just right now, but over the course of the decade. Um, how can Pisces provide leadership to the decade? Um, are these large-scale programs, is that the appropriate level of engagement that we might want to do? And how would such a program fit within the Pisces structure? Could it be multiple working groups like, like the idea I just presented? What other levels of engagement should Pisces consider? And really important, I think, what partners and stakeholders should Pisces reach out to? And that could be also reaching out of our domain of our, our six Pisces member nations to some of the more developing countries within, uh, within the North Pacific. And what are the science and societal themes that Pisces should focus on? Um, so I'll leave it at that. And I just encourage you to please think about it and provide your input. We'd really like to hear what the ideas of the Pisces community more generally is on how Pisces can take advantage of this great opportunity um, to participate and lead um, in the ocean decade. And that's, that's where I'll stop, thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. Um, so there is, please, if you have any questions for Steve, please place them in the chat box and I will read them to him. So there's a comment, um, here from, from Manu um, saying the US has established a national UN Ocean Decade Committee through the National Academy of Science as the formal, formal national representative to the decade. Um, I think each country is asked to designate an official representation body. It may be a good idea to identify who those bodies are for the Pisces member countries. So I guess that's a comment at this point. Yeah, that, that is a good point. Um, I think each country is trying to develop their own um, structure on how to engage um, with the decade. And as, as Manu has mentioned, 
Um, the US is doing that through the uh, National Academy of Sciences and putting together a committee. Um, and I would, uh, I would suspect that the other Pisces member nations are doing something similar. Okay, um, and then there, let's see, there's a comment uh, from Jack Barth. I like the basin scale events to coastal scale impacts of this idea. Fang Li is saying a program proposal is a good idea to evolve the decade, involve in the decade. Um, Jeanette is saying, I like the idea of reaching out to other countries in the North Pacific. Um, so I'm going to just ask a question. What if I am a Pisces scientist with an idea that I'd like to propose, but before going to the UN Decade website and putting it in there, I'd like to just run this past other Pisces scientists. How would I go about doing this? Would I reach out directly to you, Steve, or what are we going to have sort of a method for um, brainstorming ideas? Yeah, that, that, that's a very good question. Um, and, you know, the way I see it in terms of Pisces structure right now, um, with future being kind of the, the flagship science program, um, I see that as, as, you know, one of our responsibilities, I think, is to help coordinate and, and lead some of the activities and, and make sure that they're, they're well aligned with the decade. That doesn't mean that we're going to make those decisions or decide what projects to put forward, but I think it might be um, a good place to gather ideas and information and, um, and you know, try to coordinate and make sure that um, the right people are talking to each other. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so, so just to summarize, if you do have ideas, I think the first step is to perhaps propose your ideas to the future co-chairs, send an email, you know, everything's virtual, so it makes it a little bit harder, but we appreciate all your ideas and thoughts, so please reach out to Steve or Suk Young. There will be some meetings um, to discuss a variety of ideas. Um, so here what, what you, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, Vera. one thing I, I would, I would mention that, you know, I, I talked about, um, the first call for, for decade propose, uh, action proposal or program proposals will be in January. So I do think the future SSC is probably going to try to have some sort of online and or email discussions about if, or how we might want to, um, put forward an idea for that, but I want everyone to, to keep in mind that the decade's just starting. There's, there's plenty, right. there'll be plenty of opportunities and time to, um, to engage. Right. Yeah, I think that's, that's really great. Um, a couple of other comments. Um, Hiroaki is saying Japan is developing a national body contributing to the UN Decade of Ocean Science, but details are still under discussion. Um, Dr. Lobanov is saying the Interagency National Oceanographic Commission in Russia, which is based in the Ministry of S on Science and Higher Education, I guess that's the representative in Russia. Um, Andrew Ross, involvement of Indonesian coastal communities in the Fish GIS Ciguatera project shows that such communities outside Pisces member nations can be successfully engaged. And, and I agree, I think that's a model that that can be held forward. Um, oh yeah, so from Shinichi, he's asking, how can the expert groups, for example, working groups, contact ECOP members? Is there, is there any contact? Um, and, I, and I think we're gonna hear about that a little bit in the next talk um, about the leadership for the um, early career ocean professionals. So, Shinichi, I'm going to ask you to hold your question for the next talk, but yes, there will be people who can be contacted. And then Manu was saying, I think UN Decade provides an opportunity to engage formally non-Pisces countries. So, in, yeah, in the Southern Ocean. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you so much, Steve, for your very comprehensive overview. So you see there, there are many exciting things happening 
Um, please also feel free to reach out to me if you have ideas and you don't know who to contact. So our